Hi there, welcome to video two for the TE Tuner. In the first video, we looked at the metronome window, and in this video, we're going to do a brief overview of the analysis window. Now you can select the window views on the bottom of the application where it says Tuner, Sound, Analysis, Metronome, or Preferences. And right now, we have selected the analysis. Now the analysis window is probably the most powerful window in the TE Tuner. It allows you to visually look at your sound in a lot of different ways. It also allows you to record, save, and play back something that you've recorded to the app. And you can also import material, audio material, that you've recorded somewhere else to be played back on the app. Now this window is divided into two main parts, the upper part and the lower part. The upper part is a little bit more global, while the lower half shows you the analysis that's going on at the time. Let's look at the upper part first. In the middle, we have the tuner itself. This is a more compact version of the main tuner window in the app, and it'll show you whether or not you're in tune, and the pitch you're playing, if you're above or below that by sense, and what the hertz is of that pitch. It'll also show you what the reference pitch is. Here we have A440, and the transposition is in C, we're just in the key of C. This is pretty standard stuff for most tuners. Over on the top left, we have the temperament button. So the application needs to know what sort of temperament or tuning type it's going to be looking for to consider something in or out of tune. Most of the time, this will be on equal temperament because modern instruments play in equal temperament. But if you have an instrument that will play a different type of temperament, like just intonation, for example, you can select that. We'll look at that at a later time. Now, opposite that in the upper right is the metronome button. And this will show you what the current beat per minute is displayed, and you can turn the metronome on and off from here. Now, because I'm recording this right now, it's not going to behave exactly the way it would if I wasn't recording, but I can turn on the metronome, and normally this waveform will show the mic picking up the clicks from the metronome, but because I have this plugged into my computer to record the computer screen, it's not letting that sound go through to the microphones. But in either case, let me turn the metronome on by tapping the metronome button. And then if I want to turn it off, I tap it again. So you can turn the metronome on and off from this button. Now you can also press and hold this button and drag down. And when you do that, you get a compact version of what the metronome page looks like. And so you can make changes here without ever having to leave the analysis window. If you need a review of how these controls work, go back and look at my first video on the metronome in TE Tuner. Now to get this out of the way, I'm just going to put my finger on the bottom of this window and swipe up. This is another demonstration of how powerful the TE Tuner is. It is possible from many windows to control parameters of other windows without having to leave the window you're in, which is very nice. It saves some time and speeds up the workflow. Below that, we have the mode and range button. If I click on that, it'll show us what we can change here for the mode and range button. So currently I have the mode set to wind because I generally play wind instruments. So this would be for flutes or clarinets or brass. If I play a string instrument like a guitar or violin, I would select strings. And if I was a singer, I would select voice. And you can see the button uh, changes according to what I have selected here. Let's put it back to wind. The in tune range determines the threshold for what the tuner considers to be in or out of tune. Now damping refers to how much time it takes to analyze the pitch. I usually keep this to normal, but depending upon what I'm doing, I might choose slow, which takes a larger portion of time to analyze the pitch. So it gives you a, an average over more samples that it's taking, and fast just does less. Normal is the default setting. And I can click out of this by either clicking done or I can click the uh, button in the display itself. Now let's look at the bottom portion of the window. 
bottom portion of the window is basically the analysis window, and it shows you a lot of different information about what you're playing into the tuner. We can change how this looks by selecting the button above the gear on the left-hand side. So if I click on this, it's going to give us the views that are available to us. Currently, I'm in waveform and pitch. We're just looking at waveform, but we can add pitch to this. I'll talk about that later. Spectral will show us a spectrograph of the sound. So this is basically the energy at any specific frequency. So for example, if I play an instrument, the peak there is the fundamental of that instrument, and then anything above it could be the overtones. And you can see with my voice, you don't really get a lot of clean overtones. But let me play another uh, pitch on my flute again. And you can see over to the right, the overtones. Now going to overtones specifically, there is a harmonic window. And this divides up the overtones of the instrument that you are sending to the microphone. The left hand side will be the fundamental. And then above that, it will show you the note that is designated for the first eight overtones and its tuning and whether it's sharp or flat in sense. So that might be useful if you want to see how the timbre of your sound is being affected. The next one down is note staff. And I find this one to be not really that useful. It's displaying the pitches on a staff. But this display doesn't work all that well. We could look at this a little bit more detail later. And then at the bottom is interval trainer. This is new to version two, and so far I can't find anything on the TE Tuner website about how this actually works. All right, let's go back to waveform and pitch. So this is the window that I use the most, and there's a couple things that we can do with this. First off, the gear icon will allow us to bring up a pop-up menu to choose from options that can be displayed. So right now, I have no pitch showing, but I can turn on a normal pitch line, and it'll show me a graphic representation of the pitch. So obviously green is in tune, and then above or below is a varying color. We can also look at this in a more expanded version. That would be the tall pitch line. Both of these work within plus or minus 30 cents. Now, if you're playing a lot of notes, these lines can get kind of uh, crazy. So you can also look at a pitch bar. And this is just a sort of a compressed overview of this. It doesn't take up as much room, and you really can basically tell whether you're sharp or flat by the color. So it's showing you the same thing, but just in a different way. Now, depending upon what you're working on, you can choose any of these three or no pitch at all. Now, below that, you have show waveform, and you can also show the tone. So TE Tuner tries to analyze your tone, and based on the color, if it's a darker blue, they consider it a better tone. So you can see where I'm talking, it's not very blue. But if I play something, it'll like that tone. Now between these two, one of them has to be selected. So I can uncheck Show Waveform, and just look at the tone, or I can show waveform only, but I can't try to uncheck tone, it just won't let me do it. Now beats is a function that if I have the selected and I have the metronome running, it will show lines superimposed on the graphic of what the metronome is in terms of the measure and then the beat within that measure. So I'll turn this on. So now we're on measure two, beat two, Beat three, beat four, measure three, and obviously it's counting the measures from when I first start the metronome playing. I'll stop it. Now if I pull this down and I make an adjustment here, that was in four, four, and I go to three, four, for example, and I swipe it back up. Now it's not gonna show the measure in four beats, it's gonna show me the measure in three beats.
I find this to be useful sometimes. I also, when I'm using the metronome, can just visually look at the click that's being picked up by the microphone on my iPad. Again, that's not happening here because I'm recording the screen. Um, but this is just another way of looking at that. Right, let me turn that off. The amount of time that's being shown as the screen scrolls by is controlled by the time span button here next to the gear. And if I hold down my finger on it, I can change the time either up or down. The highest setting is 50 seconds. So right now we can see 50 seconds going on within the scrolling display. If I hold it and drag down, I can get it to go very, very fast. And while you see less, this might be useful for looking at more precise information about what you're trying to see. And in fact, I generally have mine, well, it's a little hard to see here with your finger in the way, usually between 20 and 15, somewhere around there. It's, it's going by slow enough that it doesn't get too crazy, but it's also allowing me to see things in a little bit more detail. Let me move this up a little bit here. And the last thing we can do is we can change the scrolling version of this display to more of a Star Wars kind of crawl. And that is the button next to the time span. If I click on that, it'll flip it over and the display moves away from you in time. And I find this is nice with the pitch working because I can kind of see this a little bit better. And again, you can adjust the amount of time that that's showing. I can make it go very slow. And if I want to go back to the scoring display, I just hit the button again and it goes back. All right, so this is a overview of the controls on the analysis page of the TE Tuner. In the next video, we will look at how you can record to the tuner, save your recordings and play them back, and how you can import sounds from other sources. All right, see you in the next video.